So we're going to do uh, the readings by alphabetic order, and that means we're going to start with Elise Atchison. Elise, are you here? Yeah. There she is. Uh, Elise is one of the wonderful writers whom I, I didn't have a chance to work with until this, this project. She contributed a fantastic short story. Um, she has appeared in the South Dakota Review, Montana Quarterly, Jackson Hole Review, Death Throat, Reflections West Radio, and elsewhere. She recently received an artist grant from the Barbara Deming Memorial Fund for her novel in progress. Uh, and I know she's reviewing books for Montana Quarterly as well. So please welcome wow. Elise. with so many great writers. I'm going to read the first few pages of a story called Ancient Aquifers. Raymond was under his Ford pickup pulling the clutch when he heard a vehicle turn into his drive. He scooted out from under the truck and wiped his greasy fingers on his insulated coveralls. The bright white Hummer kicked up a cloud of dust as it turned toward the house. It was a rhinoceros of a vehicle, brand new looking, with no dents or scratches, no sunburn paint or hail dings, and he was willing to bet no hard starts on cold winter mornings. Just the sweet purr of a life of luxury in a heated garage. He picked up his cowboy hat and clamped it down on his head, tilting it ever so slightly to the right. The driver waved, a woman's delicate fingers undulating on the other side of the windshield. He stepped behind the old Ford as if it were a blind, as if he and the rusty truck could bloom right in with the dry bunch grass and scraggly sagebrush that covered the scabby section of land. He could have been a white jackrabbit who thought he was still crouching in the winter snow, a drab brown rattlesnake who didn't realize he was lying in the middle of the blacktop until a semi rolled over him. The woman climbed out of her armored vehicle and looked right at him. This is this the Thornton Ranch, she said in a sing-songy voice. He stood silent, staring at her white jeans and lavender silk blouse. A ponderous rubber turquoise hung round her neck. On her feet were a pair of silver boots, unscuffed and shimmering, like the river under a full moon. His eyes were turned to the white jeans. White wasn't a color that would last long on the ranch. The fine summer dust and sticky spring mud left their mark on people's clothes, their skin, even their state of mind if they lived here long enough. And Raymond had lived here a very long time, all 69 years of his life. This is the Thornton Ranch, the woman repeated. Raymond raised his hand to the brim of his hat and croaked out a rusty, yep. He didn't talk much unless he went to town. And then he exercised his voice on the drive so it wouldn't come out raspy and rough song. He cleared his throat and said, yep, sure is. <coughs> The sweep of her strawberry hair flowed down to her chest like the mane of a red roan he used to have. He couldn't help noticing the deep cleavage revealed by her unbuttoned blouse. The full, round breasts made him redden and look away. Is the place still for sale, the woman said, glancing from the ranch house to the ragged hills rising up behind it. Seems to be, he said. You the caretaker? Guess you could say that. I own the place. Oh, she looked flustered for a moment, but she quickly regained her composure. I'm Yolanda, she said, holding out her hand. Yolanda, he repeated to himself. <laughs> it was a buttery name, slipping out smooth and creamy on the tongue of his mind. It almost made him forget that she was here to buy the ranch. He stuck out his hand, and she looked down at his greasy fingers and laughed. He pulled his hand back and said, sorry about that, I've been working on my truck. He nodded toward the Ford with its oily innards spread out on the ground. She laughed again, revealing an immaculate row of snowy white teeth. When she turned to take in the ranch, he caught a whiff of something exotic, a scent that conjured up salty breezes drifting off a tropical sea, bare skin against white sands, the shadowy hint of coral reefs under clear blue water, a lush land oceans away from the dry, bleak landscape he lived in. Of course he could only imagine such things. He'd never actually been to the ocean. He'd never been further south than Denver, where he'd go gone to a farm implement sale a decade or so ago. 
But something about that scent seemed familiar. It reminded him of Mandy. He never had time for a woman after high school. Mandy had been the only one. She had been his girlfriend for his junior and senior years. She was the only girl he ever let himself date him about. The kind of luscious, fleshy dreams that he should have known could never be real. His brother had always been the wild one, staying out all night, going with a different girl every week. Garrett liked to go to the five spot almost every night. He liked to drink and diet, dance, and drink and fight, and drink and fool around with whoever was drunk enough to follow him out to his truck at the end of the night. Raymond assumed he'd had hundreds of women, even though there weren't hundreds of women worth having in Granite. Garrett's death matched his life. He drove home one night after closing out the five spot, and he went off Highway 51, rolling his truck four times in Carson's field. Mandy was with him. After his brother died, Raymond had to do twice the work around the ranch. He'd given up on any dream of a woman fitting into his hard scrabble life. All his energy had to go into helping his father keep the ranch afloat. Raymond looked down at his greasy hands. He looked at the stuffing leaking out of the knees of its coveralls, the seam separating on his boots. He gazed across the empty fields as if he were watching the ghosts of hungry cattle stumbling over the broken land. The fields were bone dry. Yolanda's eyes followed his gaze and she frowned. The real estate agent said you had water. Yep, Earl drilled down to the Red Shale Formation at 52. Best water around. Raymond could still remember the moment the water came gushing out of the ground. The driller said they had hit a pocket of paleo water trapped down in some ancient aquifer under their land. He said the water had been sitting under there for eons, just waiting for someone to pull it back up into the light of day. The 10-year-old Raymond imagined pale, eyeless creatures swimming around down there, slimy and hungry for something they'd never seen. He was sure they would shrivel up into lumps of mush in the bright, hot light of the sun. But when he cupped his hands and tasted that ancient water, he knew it was the best water he'd ever tasted. The drillers had punched a hole in the skin of the land. They drilled down through layers of rocky flesh, right into the purest water on earth. And I'll stop there. Thank you.